evening and welcome to uh, this Wednesday, August 27, 2014 uh, Board of Education meeting. Has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes. Please call the roll. Ito? Here. Eliza? Here. Garner? Here. Herzog? Here. 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 All right. Uh, call, roll call Pledge of Allegiance. Please follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Next on our agenda is administrative reports, superintendent's report. Uh, yes, uh, President Lenoff, um, this evening um, of a rather brief but um, uh, important superintendent's good news report. I think this is the last short one we have before we get deep into student things. Um, the um, uh, first is a um, is the excerpts from a thank you note from the Sheldon a Area Nature Center Committee. Um, annually they do a number of um, a improvement projects and um, they are sharing with us uh, their appreciation for um, the support that they've received um, at uh, the Nature Center um, and uh, the assistance particularly with uh, recognizing uh, the Oshkosh West High School football team for their contribution of um, uh, lifting, carrying, and um, uh, carrying on uh, cleanup activities. Um, we've had an interesting summer there this uh, summer because of both heavy rains and uh, winds and uh, again the um, work that uh, uh, our maintenance staff, uh, 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 Sue Schwar, and, and I have been making contact and continue to work on a monthly basis with the Sheldon Area Nature Center uh, Committee, uh, maintains uh, the quality of our working relationship and their long hours of volunteerism that um, uh, is involved with uh, making sure that um, uh, the Nature Center is well preserved. Um, they're happy and we're happy and uh, Oakwood um, uh, Elementary School along with the neighborhood has benefited from that continued progress at the Sheldon Area Nature Center. The Lighted Schoolhouse um, uh, event on August 14th marked the final day for the second annual Summer uh, Lighted Schoolhouse program housed at M-Line Cook and open to uh, K-5 students from Washington, Webster, uh, Webster Stanley, M-Line Cook Elementary Schools uh, that um, more, in, more than doubled in size this year with more than 60 participants working with over 30 partners uh, from the university and community. Students were exposed to a variety of activities. Students were given the opportunity to participate in drum circles uh, with the Oshkosh Rhythm Institute to learn the amazement of bubbles with the Art of Wonder uh, to garden as part of the school plant beds with the Master Gardeners and to sail with the International Youth Sailing uh, uh, Program of Oshkosh in addition to many other activities. So wonderful experiences for our students uh, uh, in that program. Uh, a week ago, um, Wednesday night, uh, a number of us had the opportunity to join with the city of Oshkosh and the Oshkosh community that are uh, receiving a wellness award on Wednesday, August 20th, the Oshkosh Area School District received one of 20 citywide awards for being a well workplace. This is part of the Well City Achievement Award, the congratulations to the award. Special thank you to Diane Vogel, who put much energy and time into this effort. Uh, the board received a report uh, last spring regarding our wellness program, and uh, we understand that we are the fourth city in the state of Wisconsin and uh, the 13th city nationwide to achieve um, well city um, recognition. Um, uh, lots of efforts on lots of uh, major uh, other businesses in the community participating along with the city of Oshkosh. So it's a great partnership to be a party to. The first annual uh, Oshkosh Area School District Writing Institute, 15 teachers from across the district met for two weeks this summer as they began their collaborative work with the Fox Valley Writing Project. Participants designed an inquiry project to inform their teaching uh, creative demonstration lessons, put themselves in the shoes of their students as they work pieces of writing through a process and even celebrated their accomplishment with an author's chair. Um, Follow-up sessions will occur throughout the academic year for the teachers continuing to learn uh, uh, working together. The Oshkosh Area School District has received um, uh, the wonderful news that um, we were awarded uh, $1,170,000 uh, uh, 
$1.177 million, um, $1 million grant from the U.S. Department of Education under the ele elementary school counseling program to be used over a three-year period uh, ending on September uh, 2017. The grant was one of 41 projects awarded nationwide uh, from 566 applicants that were reviewed. Uh, the grant will be utilized to enhance school counseling services across all 14 elementary schools and in year one and target four sites including Merrill, Oaklawn, Reed and Washington. The project has uh, five discrete objectives. Um, one, to decrease academic and behavioral um, achievement gaps between uh, student subgroups, in, increase um, parent engagement connections. Uh, third, uh, reduce the number of disciplinary referrals for grades five, uh, K-5. Uh, four, to increase annually the percentage of staff who can demonstrate the skills and knowledge needed to implement conscious discipline with PBIS framework and make appropriate mental health referrals. Uh, increased behavior and emotional um, strength and indicators of resiliency of, in students. The award will support three full-time equivalent school tr counselors uh, with one of the counselors serving as a half-time project director in training. Um, since we received this word um, uh, two days ago uh, and had it confirmed Monday afternoon, we've been working on uh, preparing a response, but we all celebrate and Thanks to all the members of the executive team who participated in this. Thank you, Dr. Geigley and Julie and uh, all of the individuals involved. Uh, very uh, positive outcome. Uh, lastly, uh, you have a list of activities that relate to the um, uh, superintendent's calendar in the last uh, two-week period. And I would just like to comment that, um, once again, as I've been cautiously watching um, <laughs> schools across the, the district get near to completion are three schools that had major renovations occurring this summer. Um, I can tell you that um, uh, we're close. Um, uh, in, uh, unfortunately, Merrill, is, uh, as we have open house, uh, suddenly we have um, um, open um, uh, asphalt um, uh, being uh, heated for putting a roofing project as parents are approaching uh, uh, the school. Uh, not the best timing in the world, but uh, uh, the insides of the schools are in, in fine shape with some minor uh, finish cleaning, but uh, uh, in visiting with teachers at each three, each of the three schools that had the major construction this summer, uh, this afternoon, uh, I found teachers to be happy and content and glad to be back in their rooms and getting organized for the four o'clock open houses that were occurring and uh, being very pleased uh, with that. I had a chance to visit uh, six uh, schools today, uh, three of which were had been under construction and uh, uh, I find our staff to be positive, excited as they were in, in discussions that we had earlier this week with them on Monday with convocation. So uh, we're off to uh, an exciting good start for the year and really celebrating being in a positive atmosphere for the first time in numbers of years. So thank you. All right. I thank you very much. Uh, other administrative reports? Is there anyone else who wishes to report on the subcommittee? Mr. Dito. Uh, first off, policy and governance uh, met on the 19th. We had a presentation uh, for NEOLA uh, in regards to their policy management services. The board recommended that NEOLA uh, management service agreement go forward for approval at this meeting. Um, we also uh, discussed student athletic concussion management plan that was uh, revamped. We didn't have one of these last year. In, uh, uh, Brad Jadarski, Craig Leader, and, and Dr. Geigley did a really good job on creating this um, document. We don't, it was just a rule that we reviewed, so it doesn't require a vote. Uh, we, <coughs> we received a report about the closed campus high school project last year, if you'll remember, in an effort to give get kids out of study hall, give them some flexibility. If they maintained a, a higher grade point average, they were allowed to get this flexibility. <laughs> And this has been an overwhelming success, and we're going to continue with that. Uh, we also have some things which are on this evening's agenda, uh, policy 342.3, gifted and talented programs. The committee recommended that uh, this be uh, go to the board this evening. 342.4, uh, programs for children at risk. The board uh, recommended that this evening. 225.1 administrative staff evaluation that was also recommended to be pushed forward for a vote this evening and policy revisions to um, policy 170 board meetings 
and the committee also recommended that we move forward with that this evening. That's it for policy and All right, thank you. Other reports? Steve? Energy Committee uh, met yesterday. Congratulations, Dr. Lemberger, on being chosen um, co-chair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're also looking for another co-chair, uh, another chairman, and we're going to be promoting this to the public uh, through website and through some press releases. Um, the idea of the Energy Committee when it was created was to get community participation in this, and we have had some very good community participation in this. And I would suggest that from what I'm hearing, and being, being on the committee since 2009, that uh, we're leading in the state, or certainly in the area with, in this regards in um, energy conservation, moving forward with recycling ideas, some innovative progressive ideas here in regards to trying to keep our energy costs down. Um, they did a quick facilities update. Uh, Washington is being completed. The work uh, over there is being completed. Uh, also over at Webster. And there was a lot of work at Merrill, which included boiler replacement, roofing windows, and tuck pointing. Uh, we also are going to be reviewing and sending out and discussing with the principals and educators about when they're setting up the classrooms, when we put in these boilers with the new univent systems, you can't pile all kinds of stuff on top of the univents because obviously you're blocking access to the heat. So we need to sit there and have some uh, professional development on that. We also received copies of the energy usage report. We'll have a full year now, starting in September, so we can take a look at what the changes were at Oak Lawn. Um, interesting data. This this data will be posted for the, the public at some point later this year to review on a monthly basis on our website. Um, I know these things aren't exciting, but they are exciting. We're changing our gas supplier. Uh, we've entered into a one-year contract with a co-op gas company. And the idea here is that uh, this group out of Illinois wants to con uh, con contract with schools and public entities within Wisconsin to secure a large group. We'll have buying power to obtain gas at a lower cost. I believe we're the first or second district in the state to go with a supplier which will reduce our energy costs and our transportation costs, which is a good thing. Uh, next uh, agenda items and stuff, we're looking at doing uh, a reissuance of our energy usage uh, rules and compressing that more to the, a bullet point type thing so people can retain it better and our next meeting is on the 18th 2014 at 1 p.m. the public is invited this is at the maintenance building over on South Main Street thank you and, and mr. president I just made comment um, uh, this afternoon um, uh, Sherry sent out uh, a notice of um, the reminder of making sure things were not on top of those new unit events and um, as I toured uh, buildings today I had um, individual teachers talked to me about was this okay was this okay was this far enough away um, teachers were reading the email messages um, on the issue and in a couple of cases um, I helped people lift things off of the events so that uh, compliance was rather, uh, <laughs> rather quickly there but uh, uh, the issue is that uh, you know as a whole many of our classrooms in our buildings are small and teachers have lots of wonderful stuff in their classrooms and uh, uh, that stuff occupies space and now losing um, that um, uh, 8 to 10 feet of um, univent space is a hard thing to get used to and uh, so we're uh, we'll be asking principals to continue work on that um, even some uh, photographs of inappropriate use of univents were posted on uh, notices to all employees this afternoon so I just want to comment on the uh, that that same issue I think historically there's been a lot of role modeling um, by current teachers, former teachers, and our teachers who uh, were students and saw that role modeling of placing things on the univents for various reasons, either because there wasn't enough storage or they were unhappy with the airflow, either too hot or too cold, or just, well, it wouldn't have been just right, but too hot or too cold. Mm -hmm. So there's a long history of uh, misuse of the univents, and uh, I'm sure these are much more efficient than 
those of days gone by, so hopefully it will be a smooth transition for our staff. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was quite amazing to see how um, between early afternoon and late afternoon when the uh, notice was out, uh, how attentive um, people who were reading their emails were on the issue of uh, protecting that new equipment. <laughs> Other reports? Seeing none, uh, we will move on to non-agenda related public forum. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight on a non-agenda related item? Something that is not on tonight's agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda related public forum. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight uh, on an item that is appearing on tonight's agenda? All right, workshop number one, McKinstry Energy Efficiency Projects. Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Uh, before you tonight, uh, each of you has been given a packet uh, to share information on where we are at for the next projected energy efficiency exemption facility improvement project. Uh, we have had, um, um, as Stan had said, we're just finishing our current exemption project, um, which has been a challenge to wrap up. But as you have an opportunity to walk through the building and see the improvements to the boiler rooms, to the facilities, to the unit vents and the classrooms, how we're delivering uh, those savings with windows, tuck pointing, roofing, um, I think uh, we're certainly going to see the, uh, a positive outcome as we start to uh, monitor our energy consumption bills this winter. Hopefully we don't have as bad a winter as we did last year, but it'll be encouraging to be able to see all of our efforts come to fruition as we monitor those plans. So the purpose of tonight was to uh, discuss the next proposed exemption, which really was a continuation of uh, future exemptions focusing on boilers, lighting, HVAC, and controls. Um, six different buildings, um, as you will see in your packet tonight, and uh, we would like to discuss these um, as a more of an overall overview, excuse me, of all the buildings, so yeah. Yeah. should we take over, please? You bet. Thanks, Jim. Um, thanks again for having us. Uh, last time you saw us was probably in, back in February, I think. We just kind of provided a halfway update before all of the construction work, uh, you know, this summer. So, you know, by no means do we want to get into the weeds, and we want to just um, show you a short presentation. It's actually the same um, as your as your packet here. So, maybe we can. Just wanted to highlight a couple of. Uh, topics here, um, and we talked about this in February a little bit, but um, the district, since we've worked with McKinsey over the last five years, uh, have seen over a, uh, one and a half million dollars of guaranteed energy savings. Um, that's through nearly 30 million dollars worth of investments, um, but your energy usage is, you know, almost top ten in the state from a percentage standpoint, so 72 cents a square is uh, very low. Uh, for the age of buildings that you have in Oshkosh. So a um, couple of other um, key things we wanted to share is this is just the overall uh, list that we've compiled um, at this point today. So back in July, we met with Stan and the administrative team uh, during our what we call rough order of magnitude. 
uh, which is kind of halfway. Um, we go through that same process for each phase, and then we say, "Hey, are we on on track here? Are we looking at you know the right things that you know that you guys need?" And so, uh, Stan and, and team had asked us to take a deeper dive into some things and less of a dive into into others. So. This is the list that we've compiled today, and um, the pricing that you see there is a guaranteed maximum price. Um, done all the homework necessary to achieve the scopes of work uh, with contractors and partners um, alike. So I'm not sure that we need to necessarily get into each one of these. Um, we <coughs> do have the team here as well to answer any you know, technical questions that you may have about the proposed upgrades. Um, but like Jim said, the majority of them is roofing, uh, controls, HVAC, and some lighting. Uh, we're mainly addressing some facilities that were not addressed in the previous phases, um, you know, due to their uncertainty and a variety of other things. But um, the one pieces that I wanted to kind of touch on tonight was the process itself. Um, sorry, there are a few slides here. Oops, I'll touch a little bit on the savings as well. Um, see there, uh, we used a similar approach that we did last time to generate uh, some of the savings. Um, we calculated about $38,000 of guaranteed uh, energy savings on an annual basis, which I was uh, pleased to find even that much as we've gone through so many phases of projects here. But a lot of, a lot of it is in the lighting and a lot of it is that uh, North High School, which we hadn't done a lot of work in in the past. So, um, in addition, uh, we've taken a, a repair risk calculation. Essentially, it takes 35% of the uh, first cost today. Um, we, we take that over a 10-year period and bring it back to today's dollars, um, and then that all added up from uh, avoiding dollars added to the capital budget as well as repairs, um, we're looking at almost $500,000 of a budget impact um, on an annual basis. And the last set there just shows the timeline. I think this wasn't something that Sue may have provided as well um, to the board, but it is a little bit of a tight time frame, and I know we did want to meet with the, the finance committee prior to this uh, as a lead-in, but uh, scheduling just did, you know, didn't work out there. But uh, a couple of steps from a financing standpoint, and then we would like to uh, be back on, on the 22nd of October, you know, from a, an approval standpoint if the district, you know, decides to move forward with it. So, um, I guess I'll just leave it at that and, you know, we're open to any questions from a scope standpoint or um, anything that you might have. In your packet, I, um, and I also sent it out really late, is the revised tax impact. In the staff report, I showed a tax impact for $8 million to $10 million. but then when we um, got back together again and we were up to... 14 million. I, I, in your, in front of you, should be another um, estimate, and it, oh. it still shows 8, 10, 12, and 14 million. And the reason it's different than the, the estimate that was in your packet is the estimate in your packet. They didn't show making a payment until the 15, 16 school year, so the the levy wouldn't have an impact until 15, 16. But I wanted to be able to have an impact already in 14, 15. So they redid all of the debt structure, so we're actually making a principal payment early enough in 15 that we would tax for that payment already in 14, 15. So it sort of stretched out the, the payment schedule a little more. It's still borrowing for 20 years, but there's an earlier principal payment. And because you're not, um, you're not waiting a whole year to make an interest payment, it also impacts the interest payment. So it has a little bit of an impact on the mill rate. It actually lowers the impact of the mill rate. Um, and so what I have in front of you actually shows that you can borrow $14 million for not much more than the previous estimate showed for, for $10 million. I don't know if that makes sense, if I clarify that. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions or any discussion at this time with regard to the scope? Yeah. We intend tomorrow morning this got reversed because of vacation schedules and conflicts that we, we un strangely enough, will uh, with the uh, Facilities and Finance Committee tomorrow morning be reviewing this normally would occur in reverse order. Um, but um, uh, in order to inform the entire board, we wanted to make sure we brought this entire package to the board to look at it at this uh, time frame. Uh, basically, what this um, review does, 
uh, with, um, with the exception of um, uh, the recreation building. It basically um, would then include um, uh, every facility from the very beginning uh, through uh, every facility being addressed in one way or another uh, based on the criteria that's established by this uh, process and law so that we would be in a position that um, uh, um, the um, response to uh, the, the needs for each building uh, would be accomplished and we're looking at um, um, whether it's a two-year or a three-year three -year project. Uh, the good news on all of this also is, as we um, are working on the lakeside process, that the lakeside issues um, um, can be absorbed um, that, um, and, and do some retrofits on lakeside, um, the older portion of the building at the same time, so that when occupancy would occur at lakeside, um, I think we would have um, uh, uh, parts of all of the building being renovated, uh, just not to the same level as new construction would be. We'd be able to deal with uh, windows, uh, roof, and and uh, heating, ventilation, um, uh, those sorts of things in, in a manner that would consummate with the um, the new construction project as well. And that's um, from a standpoint of um, having a, a, a balanced satisfaction in that building makes a lot of sense. And certainly, um, uh, uh, we've not talked about the order of any projects, but the one that we would certainly know in year one would be the Lakeside project. So it would be done in a timely fashion with the other. Uh, other work at Lakeside. Can you briefly explain the, you've got uh, highest mill rate and average mill rate listed here, um, and uh, highest mill rate is listed at 15 cents at 14 million, and average is listed at 20 cents for 14 million, uh, and I guess what, uh, when highest mill rate for uh, 2015? Is yeah, I should have had her write that this PMA did this for us, and I should have had her award that a little different. Highest mill rate is, is the impact it's going to have on the first year. And then actually, it'll go down after that first year. The first year is higher. And then um, you always get state aid a year later. So because we're making this debt payment, then in the following year, we'll get a little bit more state aid. So that'll, that'll mm -hmm. lower the impact of the levy. So by the second year, it actually goes down a few cents. The average is high because. In the last three years of how they're structuring the debt is so that it kind of fits within our current debt so that the impact is lower and in um, towards the end of the borrowing so like about 16 years into the borrowing all of our other debt comes off and so then we start making really large payments on this borrowing and so the impact 20 years out is like 59 cents okay but that's why the average is up because basically you're infilling you're leveling off the, the playing field across the entire time, and so you've infilled the last part of it. Right, so the okay. first couple of years is 15, then it goes down to like 12, and then it stays 12 until the last three years, and then it goes up to 59. But a lot of things could happen between now and 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could refinance that debt, um, and it's really not a 59 cent impact because a whole bunch of other borrowing is coming off, right. and then this will just fill in. So your, your actual borrowing levy will stay about the same. And um, to think about, in reality, um, uh, the um, existing bonded debt on uh, new construction um, would have expired. Um, even um, Oak Lawn will, um, in 17 years, uh, 16, 18 years, be off the, the bill. Okay. Thank you. That mm -hmm. does explain it very well. Other questions, comments? Barb? One of the, um, the things that jumps out at me from your report, which I believe is excellent, I've very impressed with the quality of your work in terms of writing this in layman's terms so all of us can understand, and the photographs you've included. But I keep seeing this phrase over and over, something has exceeded their useful life. And, um, and I, I'm just really struck by that. And I think if many of us had um, heating units or ventilation tunnels or whatever, or fan motors that were in the, in the age range of 40 to 90 years, we'd hopefully would have replaced them by now. Um, the other comment I wish to make about this report, which, which really strikes me, is that this has been a trend over many, many years in this district to hang on to things that have exceeded their useful lives um, as a way to keep tax rates down and, and those kinds of things. On the other hand, many of these heating units, ventilation tunnels, fan motors, have been kept operational by a an extraordinary maintenance team, maintenance team and building level custodians, many of whom who have had to create 
replacement parts because they no longer existed for those pieces that had exceeded their normal life. So I just want to give a shout out to the maintenance staff and the custodians, current and former, who have made these things last 40 to 90 years and ensure that the district has been good stewards of the dollars provided by this community to run our schools. And with what you're proposing, we'll be able to continue to do that. So thank you. Other comments or questions? Right, they're going to be bringing this back before us, so this is your opportunity. Seeing none, all right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is the consent resolution agenda. For the consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background material on each item or has discussed it at a previous meeting. These will be acted upon with one vote without discussion. If a board member wants to discuss any item, it will be pulled out of the consent agenda and will be voted on separately. Um, pulling number 13, is there anything else that people wish to pull? Yes. Uh, I had emailed you yesterday about 7, 12, and 13. 7 and 12 as well. All right. Anything else? People wish to poll? All right. Uh, the board will consider approval of minutes of July 23rd, 2014 board meeting, minutes of August 13th, 2014 board meeting, bills payable, personnel, A, appointments, temporary appointments, resignations, and salary schedule. Uh, number five, near site clinic and uh, Intera contract. Number six, first class notification of annual budget. Number eight, Neola Inc. License agreement number nine updates to policy 342.3 gifted and talented program number 10 updates to policy 342.4 programs for children at risk number 11 updates to policy 225.1 administrative staff evaluation. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Aye. 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 Resolution number seven. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve having two board meetings in June, June 3rd and June 17th, 2015, and one board meeting in July starting in June, starting in June 2015 as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. I do support this motion. My only question is whether or not if this is going to be an ongoing change, that is two board meetings in June and one in July, if that should be, that language should be incorporated into board policy 170 at some future point. I think that seems reasonable. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morgan. Yeah, it makes sense. The other question I have is, um, I'm glad you pulled this because I had kind of forgotten about it. It was a small thing. but. It seems like we are in, in November, December, we always go from the second and fourth Wednesday to the first and third. Why don't we just do the first and third all year round, and that way we are consistent and we, and we don't confuse people. I mean, I'm not sure why we do the second and fourth normally. It's that way when I came here. But the first and third is just as good, and then we don't run into the holidays issue. Into Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right. Mm -hmm. Administratively, we can Might make, run into make it work. July. Mm -hmm. The only time, but there's only one. But there's only one meeting in July. July. Yeah. Mr. Dito has a question. Mr. Dito. Well, then what are we going to do when we have high school graduation, which usually occurs in the first week of June? If we're going to have it, I mean, then it's going to be backed up there. The way the policy reads now has flexibility in there. There are times when we can change these. I mean, there's going to be times where where you have a holiday fall on something like this. I understand what you're saying, John. I mean, we I could think, do it on the first and third. I, I think we could look at it, but I think it could be looked at in policy and governance. It and and if, it, if it worked as John suggests, we could do it. If not, I mean, and then we could actually modify it. Uh, 170 again. Yeah. Uh, if not, uh, we continue as, we, as we're going. But. In recent years, because of the school calendar, um, we have had graduation on the second, in the second week of June, not in the first. So it has not been a conflict um, uh, in that, and that's why we carefully made sure that we looked at the first and third in June um, to, to uh, deal with that issue. So, but um, uh, I, 
either combination from the standpoint of our trying to encourage administrators to take vacation when students are not here and to be away um, and what we've discovered with um, keeping them um, as full a board together it's not always going to work but most of the time it is really nice to have um, uh, all seven board members here as often as possible uh, it allows for some freedom of vacation and adjustments as well so we can make anything work but it's um, I think it's a good experiment for one year but I think the suggestion of changing policy is an excellent one Other comments? Do we need to make a motion to table this then, or? Uh, wouldn't have to. We could still approve this, and it could still be modified later. If oh. mm -hmm. Other comments? All right, seeing none, call the roll. Dito? Aye. Dito, aye. Eliason? Aye. Eliason, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Lumberger? Aye. Lumberger, aye. Saganak? Aye. Saganak, aye. Aye. Resolution number 13, be resolved of the Oshkosh Area School District Twelve. Board. Twelve. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, resolution number 12, be resolved of the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve updates to policy 170 board meetings as filed with the Secretary of the Board of Education. So moved. Second. I'll also support this resolution. My reason for pulling it was to tie it to number seven um, so that the, the language is consistent with the practice so that we don't have to have a separate resolution that doesn't seem very efficient to me to to address policy changes with resolutions so um, I appreciate the work that uh, Mr. Dito led in the policy and governance meeting relative to some updates in this uh, policy 170 so I can use this opportunity to thank him for his leadership in that regard I think we should actually send this back to, to policy and governance and have this discussion about what, instead of doing it now and then doing it again, let's maybe take it back and, uh, in the but September. Would it, would it change what you've, I mean, the, what I read in here doesn't necessarily, uh, well, I guess some of it would be affected by what? No, not really. I mean, the parts about the dates, the actual dates would mm -hmm. be the parts you would change within that document, not the things that we. That you did, right. right. So the things that you did would, if we adopted them now, probably wouldn't change much in your next discussion. I would hope not, no. <laughs> I'd entertain a motion either way, if, if you wish to table or if you wish to. Well, you, you make some, you make some, some, a good point there. Yes, I mean, I don't, I don't see how that's going to be affected if we change no, it I the don't, first I and third. I don't think so either. Fine. Other discussion? Please call the roll. Aye. Aye. Now, resolution 13 be it resolved the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve Mr. Frank uh, Edigen as an expulsion <coughs> hearing officer for the 2014 2015 school year as filed with the Secretary of the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Even though I ask that this be pulled, I do support this. My only concern is that um, we only have one um, expulsion hearing officer being named, and if he is working for other school districts or would be ill or out of town, I wouldn't want those expulsion hearings to be delayed. Mm -hmm. I think that was one of the things I wrestled with as a new board member serving on those expulsion hearings and, the, and recognizing the difficulty of finding three board members who are available at the same time, and my hope would be with having this hearing officer or one or two hearing officers that that process could be expedited for the sake of the students and their families. Dr. Jones has comments he's been working on uh, attempting to do exactly what you're asking and we just have been unsuccessful in That's getting fine. those names yet. And, and we hope to be, we are, are continuing to uh, seek other people. <clears throat> we did have three people to start with um, and after we had uh, laid out the details we had two individuals this is one of them and uh, agreed to it and then about a week later the second individual declined uh, for personal reasons and said that uh, he had taken another opportunity and would not have time to do it so we, we are continuing to seek other I will be bringing again just as as you see before you when we do uh, get other candidates and we're very hopeful uh, we'll bring those forward for approval as well um, in the meantime we thought it'd be prudent to uh, bring the person one person forward as we start the school year 
um, if there's any instances that that Absolutely. could come up come up uh, about. So, in the event, though, um, to answer your question directly, um, in the event that this one person would not be available in the, as you know, the timeline, there is a, a very strict timeline uh, for expulsion. We would then have the necessity uh, to call the the board mm -hmm. uh, to act on it mm -hmm. if that did not work. So we do have a, a backup plan, sure. um, but Thanks. we'd prefer you know to, to go with this this new plan. I had actually another Thank question, uh, and <coughs> I apologize for not asking it earlier. Uh, uh, having been out of town, I uh, didn't get around to it. I'm afraid. Uh, but uh, are we still going to have Davis and Kilfall at these meetings? Or would they no longer be? I guess we're spending money to do this, whereas obviously when board members do it, there's no charge to the district. So we are incurring a new cost that we haven't incurred in the past. Are we still? Are we saving money because we no longer would then need Davis and Kilthall, or are they still going to operate as? Uh, and I guess I'm asking Sue. Uh, how is how does that work? Are we still using uh, them as the? Uh, are they still running the meetings? I, I don't know. Oh, Sorry. okay. Yes. Um, oh. What we what we had planned on is uh, for the first meeting or two, if necessary, uh, using Davis and Kilthow as uh, uh, to make sure that the process was mm -hmm. integrity was was uh, agreed upon by both. They're both uh, legal. Uh, attorneys right. in the practice, but from our research with other districts, is that no, we would not in the future, okay. uh, because the policy and we've all policies were reviewed by uh, WASB, and their attorneys also uh, drafted language and, and meeting with other districts and doing research with them, that no, uh, again the new process has been developed as outlined and passed in policy. Again, just as a quick review, all cases will come to the board, so the board is always involved. So what is the net impact then? Do we have We would wash? have a savings. Okay. Um, a savings. Uh, uh, the fee that, that this gentleman uh, versus that would be uh, a savings. Okay. That's all I was looking for. Thanks. Sure. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Seeing none, call the roll. Hi. 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 Request for future agenda items. Does anyone have any anything that they wish to add uh, as a future item or an agenda? I mean, just to add that as a result of the grant, um, we'll be coming back with the staffing plan that responds to the awarding of that uh, grant for counseling uh, at a future meeting and um, be able to celebrate. Um, uh, the creation of three additional positions plus um, the assistance of additional training for um, behavioral management at elementary schools. I'm, sh I'm sure that this is already being thought of, but it just occurred to me that it's probably important to track the data that this grant um, generates mm -hmm. so that when it comes time to decide on sustainability, mm -hmm. there's data to support or just to inform the decision. I think that's important to get in place right away as soon as, yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel so fortunate when we look at the number of applicants for that grant uh, to be among that small oh, yeah, number absolutely. of grants nationally. It, um, and it's really a, a credit to the uh, quality of both content and writing that our folks did. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Announcements? Any other announcements? Mr. Mack? Yes, just um, the excitement of um, this week is um, with uh, teachers busy in their uh, in their schools and workshop um, continuing uh, many activities. It's been a very busy full week for um, all of our teaching staff and our support staff and um, everyone involved. Uh, and um, every teacher I talked to, and I think I must have talked to about 40 to 50 of them today, um, uh, about the start there where they were excited about seeing parents and children at 4 o'clock today, and they were excited about what was going to happen next Tuesday because they're really ready to go. And it's really fun to be in buildings to see the joy on the part of um, teachers and leaders in building, um, getting ready to um, uh, go. Um, compliments um, to um, our technology staff, a group of um, uh, um, uh, students that uh, we had as additional help. Um, we celebrated today uh, thanking um, uh, some uh, student uh, uh, temporary workers that helped us with all the installations all summer. 
um, uh, and um, uh, the, the joy and the pride of um, uh, teachers feeling better equipped um, in their classrooms uh, with um, uh, smart boards um, uh, ready to go, of which um, I would say that um, a good portion have worked hard on um, mastering the techniques, but we've got lots of teaching to do as well. But it's, um, it's an exciting time in schools and um, uh, starting the school year in an atmosphere of, um, of positiveness uh, as compared to uh, my previous two years here where there was a, a much higher level of glumness, it, it's truly a joy. And um, for that, we need to thank the community. Uh, the community made all the difference in the world of having a wonderful better start um, uh, for the school year and uh, looking forward to um, having um, uh, uh, great outcomes for children. All right, others? Seeing none, uh, could I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Call the roll. Aye. 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 Aye.